It used to be that you stuffed and mounted that big catch. Nowadays, catch and release is the norm. So the trend is to display replicas of the prize fish you caught, photographed, then set free. It's more humane, and you get to brag about the one that didn't get away until you let it. Sports fishermen aren't the only buyers of fish replicas. Marinas, seaquariums, and seafood restaurants also acquire them for display. While a replica is a humane alternative to mounting the real thing, one real fish does have to sacrifice his life for the cause in order to make the mold from which the replicas are cast. The first step is to surround the dead fish in a mix of soil and dirt. To construct the first half of the mold, the artist builds the mix up to the halfway point, then rinses the surface clean. Next, using molding plaster, he forms a ledge all around the fish and under the fins. He positions six to eight tabs that will help align the two mold halves. Once the plaster hardens, he pins the fins steady and pours on gel coat resin. This material picks up the scales and other intricate details. Once the gel coat cures, he removes the pins, then covers the surface in fiberglass resin and over that, shredded fiberglass cloth. Then he applies another coat of fiberglass resin, ensuring the cloth is thoroughly saturated. Once the resin hardens, he flips the fish to the other side, breaks off the plaster, and repeats all the previous steps to construct the second half of the mold. After about four hours of labor, the mold is finally finished. The mold maker removes the fish and washes the now vacant cavity. The team can begin casting the replicas. They wax the cavity to prevent sticking. Then they apply white gel coat resin, which picks up all the fine details. With a handheld chopping gun, they lay down a layer of shredded fiberglass cloth they apply resin putty along the perimeter of the cavity on each mold half. Using the alignment tabs, they close and clamp the mold halves together. Once the putty sets, they remove the clamps, open the mold, and extract the fiberglass replica. Using a jigsaw, they cut out the fish's mouth. Then, via the mouth, they fill the hollow interior with expanding polyurethane foam. The hard foam provides a solid base against which to sculpt the fish's mouth and set its eyes, fins, and gill. With a jigsaw again, they remove all the excess foam. Then with a disc sander, sand the rough edges smooth. Next, they glue a glass eye on each side of the head and, using resin putty, set the side and bottom fins, which they had removed at one point and molded separately. They epoxy teeth into the mouth. The mold maker used the real fish teeth to make a rubber mold. Then, using that mold, he cast this replica set of teeth in plastic. Now they'll bring the fish to life with color. First, using a paint gun, they apply a coat of gray primer. Once that dries, they apply a white base coat, followed by a coat of silver. With an airbrush, an artist paints the subtle shades and markings that make this fake fish look so incredibly real. The finishing touch they paint a piece of cardboard red, cut it into the shape of a gill, then glue it in place. After four to five hours of casting and painting, this prized catch is ready for display. <laughs>